Welcome to Talking Sample. Paul Bonzer, Andrew Hayes with you again. And uh, Hazy, it's another big week of sample footy. Gone and dusted. It was good. Uh, we're around seven now. We're completely done. So um, some interesting results from the weekend. We're starting to get a bit of an idea of who's going to be up around uh, the pointy end of the season. But um, some nice results. Some really, really good local footy. Now, we got great support from our sponsors. I perform have been with us from day one. But we have a new sponsor on board this week. This is very, very exciting. Top Sport. The guys at Top Sport are on board. So there's going to be a little code that pops up right now so make sure you get amongst that sign up now with the code uh get more markets and top odds with top sport we love their support of course the coin in the back pocket to gamble friendly wager mm. yeah so that'll be great all right let's have a look at the reserves results from the weekend uh winners norwood over centrals uh westies over the eagles that was a good win for them glenelg big winners over south and sturt big winners over north adelaide a uh, bit of consistency there for West Adelaide on top of the ladder still, followed by Sturt, Glenelg, uh, the Eagles and North Adelaide round out the top five. So the positive thing from a reserves point of view for West Adelaide is the league boys are struggling, but there's some depth coming through. Certainly. Women's finals are on. Um, I saw both the semi-finals, a couple of good games, uh, but the prelim final was on the weekend. Sturt taking on Glenelg to see who plays the Roosters in the grand final and the Double Blues got the job done. Yep, fantastic results. So Sturt goes through, they're going to be playing North in the grand final. So if you get a chance uh, this weekend, get down, support the girls. It's a really, really good solid stand of the footy now and yep. um, be a great day's action to go down there and potentially Cooper's, take the final. Cooper the Stadium family. on Sunday at uh, 2 o'clock. Um, so it should be great to get down there. And yeah, get down support the girls because it is good quality footy. Yep, absolutely. Uh, let's get into it now. Uh, so round seven kicked off on Friday nights. The Crows taking on the Eagles. I didn't know which way I'd go in terms of tipping for this one. Saying that, uh, so I've got my pen there, the Crows are absolutely stacked. Yeah. And particularly in the midfield. Yeah. Have you seen a bigger game from a Ruckman than Riley O'Brien with 37 touches and 42 hitouts? Well, the, the talk is that it's one of the best games from Ruckman in sample footy for maybe five or ten years. <laughs> it was unbelievable. <laughs> Um, I suppose the saving grace was a man who will try and embarrass and looking forward to the little bunker segment a little bit later on. Dan Menzel went ballistic in the third quarter and gave the Eagles a chance, but uh, they just had too much firepower, uh, the Crows. So Matt Crouch delivered once again, 35 disposals. Good to see Wayne Miller as well get his hands on the ball. He had 20 disposals yep. and showed some of those nice little Wayne Miller things that only he can do. So Well, two years out of footy, it's going to take a little yep. bit of time to, to get the touch and feel back. So... Yeah, good, good news for the Crows, not so much for the Eagles. So let's gloss over that a little bit and go straight to Norwood Oval. Uh, Norwood and Central, so this was a pretty good game of footy. I called this one and um, the Dogs, much better effort, improved effort from them. They were really hard at the contest. They were tough, hard at the ball. In the end, just a few skill errors and Norwood just a little bit cleaner with the footy. So if you speak to any coach, particularly someone like Paul Thomas, and you say, oh, no, was that a good loss and things like that, no one's ever going to agree with you. Mm. But... You're right, there was a lot to like about the Dogs. It was a performance that you could say, look, they've got some things to work with. Um, 21 points to the legs at Nord. It was always going to be tough, but um, they're on the right track and the Red Legs are staying relevant. Yes, they are. And uh, the next game, Glenelg, easy winners over South, 91 to 57. Uh, Panthers just struggling a little bit, aren't they? Panthers are in a bit of strife, particularly off the back of Bryce Gibbs, who's going to be out for the next 12 weeks. Uh, with shoulder surgery. So that is a massive blow for the Panthers' chances. They are already battling um, as it was right now. You take away the McGarry medalist, they are absolutely in all sorts. Um, the Bays are just going to hang around. They're going to be up around the yep. top three. We know that. Um, they're just playing for September. Um, that's fine. As well, playing Glenelg, always tough. And the Roosters made a bit of a statement at home. They knocked off the Double Blues 110 to 64. They are flying the Roosters. Look, if you, if you pick the Roosters to win, that's probably fair enough, but I don't think anyone expected this sort of margin. The Roosters are absolutely flying. They play an outstanding brand of football. They're in a really, really good spot and it probably starts in the midfield. Their depth is just outstanding. Yeah, that Jacob Surgeon needed some speed, he thought. And so in the off season, he went and got some speed and they yep. moved the footy quicker than any other team in the sample at the moment. Yep, they look really good. Um, last game of the round was in Loxton. Yes, you were there. I you was there. It. First of all, what was it like? It was great. There was over 3,000 people there. Great crowd, good atmosphere. Port jumped them early. So they yep. kicked the first four goals of the game. And then West Adelaide basically stayed with Port, outscored them for the rest of the game. So... Um, 
much improved effort from West Adelaide, and that's what we want to see as well. So I'm sure Brad Gotch would have been happier, yeah. but uh, still not happy with the with the loss. But unbelievable facilities out there at Loxton. Uh, congratulations to West Adelaide for hosting it out there, and I, I think they should do it every year. It's a, it was a great game of footy and a great atmosphere. Well, I think that is a plan, isn't it, for it to be I hope so. a, an annual game? I hope so that comes too, because uh, they love footy in Riverland and. Such a special game for such an unbelievably special footballer. We know that Xavier Dersma, the Russell Even medalist, he was yes. very, very good. Yes, he was good. And Charlie Dixon is just a giant human. Charlie Dixon did enough to play our field. Yeah, yeah. Right. He, 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 they took him off in the last quarter. He said, yeah. Charlie, you're done. A okay, short sample so, stint. Yeah, which no, he, he, look, he looked very good. Music to the so, ears of sample defence. <laughs> yes, and uh, yeah, taking home the Russell Ebert trophy with Port Adelaide. Mm. All right, Hazy, let's look at the ladder. Adelaide sitting on top. Yeah, I don't think you would have predicted this um, at the start of the season, but um, as we've said, each and every round bonds, they're healthy. So as long as they're healthy and they've got a full list pretty much to choose from, they're going to be really, really good. And there's been a few real statement selections at AFL level. Matt Crouch, I mean, he was in there this week. Does he stay on? Riley O'Brien is another one. They said that he was probably going to be here for three or four weeks in the state league. Um, but after that game, geez, I'm not sure how long he's going to stay around. But yeah, they look really, really good. And so they should, to be honest. Yeah they, yeah, they were very good. North Adelaide in second spot, six and one as well. Uh, and we just talked about how well they're going. Um, Sturt in third position, Glenelg in fourth, both with five and two. And then the Eagles make up the five with four and three. Yeah, so uh, it's still anyone's at this stage. That, that whole top five yeah. could potentially win this thing. Um, I still really like the Eagles, to be honest. And I'm not being biased there because I do think they're a fantastic football club, but um, they're going to come good, they're going to get better. They're, probably, they're also going to get better at playing night footy at Woodville Oval. So that was their first official night game. They've had a twilight game there as well. But um, in terms of putting some money down right now, I'm not sure which way you'd go. Probably the question mark is, can the Crows, one, stay healthy? And then towards the end of the year at finals time, what do they do with some of those more experienced players if they're still playing the sample? Do they put yeah. them on ice? And they, they do have restrictions come finals time as well, so they yeah. can't pick all of them. So it depends on... There'll be, it'll be interesting to see as the season gets to the end. And out of the five, Nord, South Adelaide, Port, Centrals and West Adelaide. Come on, Westies, get a win. Mm. Uh, interesting, it's probably Central Districts and West Adelaide, we know, who are not going to be contenders. But, I mean, even Port, when they've got numbers back, they look really, really good. So... There's eight there that could potentially play five, so that's what we like, uh, the evenness of the competition. It's time for everyone's favourite segment, it's time for the bunker. Yes, hello and welcome to another edition of the bunker. This week it is the quiz, and we've had some really good feedback from, feedback from our last quiz, people getting around us. and. We're going to do it again today. So, Hazy, as the inaugural winner of the quiz, I'm going to throw it to you first. Do you want to go first with the new ball for the rapid fire questions, or are you going to hand it over to Bonds? Thank you, men. Uh, I would go first, but I'm a gentleman, so you're up, Bonds. <laughs> all it's right, all you. Thanks, Set the mate. standard. Thanks. Set the standard. By the way, you should win this too. All the pressure is on you. I know. Because you're a man who knows everything there is to know about the sample. I'm not sure that's true, but anyway, right. let's so go. So feel the pressure. Feel the that's pressure. That's all right. That's all right. I, I, I got this. I got this. All right. So Bonds is going to start with the new ball. The way this is going to work, same as last time, we're going to have rapid fire questions, 45 seconds on the clock. Categories will come after that and who am I to finish? So let's start with our rapid fire questions. 45 seconds on the clock. Bonds, here we go right now. How many premierships has Woodville West Torrens Football Club won? Four. Five. What is the major sponsor on the Guernsey of West Adelaide? can pass if you want. Pass. Adelaide Galvanising Industries. How many weeks of the finals are there in the sample? There are four weeks. Correct. What is the name of the Coaches Votes Award in the sample? Good question. Pass. R.O. Shearman. Who is the major sponsor of the sample in 2022? Host Plus. Correct. What network broadcasted the sample previously to Channel 7? ABC. Correct. Who won last year's Jack Odie medal? Oh, oh no. <laughs> Oh no, how can I have a blank? Um, he gets a couple of minutes, does he? No, nah, second left, no. time up. Mental blank. Finished, 45 seconds done, it was Jack Hayes. Come on, I know, I know. <laughs> so, yeah. three Got correct. <laughs> for Bonds to start the quiz, it is tough, it's under the pressure, it certainly challenged you there. But three on the board, it's not a bad start, Bonds. We'll see how no, uh, Hazy responds here with his 45 seconds. 
Are you ready, Hazy? Yes. All right, starting the rapid fire questions now. What club won last year's reserves premiership? Great question, uh, pass. Glenelg. What is the name of the medal given to the best on ground in the Anzac Day matchup? Uh, Bob Quinn. Correct. Which team finished sixth after the regular season in 2021? Uh, that would be um, North Adelaide. Incorrect, Sturt. Sturt. Who was named in the ruck spot in the 2021 sample team of the year? Kieran Strong. Correct. The Ponderosa is the nickname for which team's ground? Oh, um, uh, the dogs. Yes. What is the mascot for West Adelaide? Um, it is a bloodhound. It is correct. Name one of two players to come runner-up to the dual winners in the last year's McGarry medal. Runner-up. Runner-up. Um, Just need one of them. Jack Hayes. Correct, time up. So, Hazy gets five. Five to three lead for Hazy after the rapid fire segment. <laughs> It is game on though, Bonds. I've got a gift there, I, the Ponderosa. I, I know, <laughs> I was going to say, we've got to uh, swap those questions around, I would have been all right too. Tell you what, if I didn't know the Ponderosa, I would have been in all sorts of trouble. No, it's just the pressure got to me, I'm good. 5-3 lead for Hazy after the first segment. The second segment is categories. So the way this is going to work, Bonds is going to go first. He is, well, I'm going to give him the different ones he can pick from. If he gets it right, it goes on to the next question. If he gets it wrong, Hazy gets right a reply. And then we'll do uh, five questions for Hazy as well. So the categories are on screen right now. You'll see the premierships and player numbers has been done. So the ones you can pick from Bonds are records, venues, Ken Farmer medalists, state games, coaches, McGarry medalists, Wooden Spoons, and Jack Odie medalists. Which way would you like to go? I will go venues, thank you. Yes, yeah, so category is time now. Bonds has chose venues. So question one is, what stadium was known as Challenge Recruitment Oval in 2007? Uh, Richmond. Richmond is incorrect. Hazy, do you think you know this question? Um, I'm going to say Glenelg. Glenelg is correct. The Bay is correct. <laughs> Hazy gets a point. On to question two, Bonds. Yes. Which sample ground is geographically the furthest east in South Australia? Geographically on the map, which sample, uh, which sample ground is geographically the furthest east? I will say Unley. Unley is incorrect. Hazy? Uh, well then, I'm gonna say Nord. That is also incorrect. I thought this might start with you. It is Elizabeth Oval. It really? I thought that initially. Didn't there you go. go. Yeah, that's a nice little bit of education. Question three. Bonds, Broad Spectrum Oval belonged to which ground? Which team's ground was Broad Spectrum Oval? These are really good questions, Dan. Um, broad Spectrum Oval. That's I'll, yeah, I'll go Unley, I guess. So that would be Sturt's ground. Yes. That is incorrect. Hazy, you get a right or a bite? Uh, broad Spectrum Oval. It's a good question, man. I'm glad you asked. It's like pad for time. <laughs> um, uh, I'm going to say uh, Prospect. So North Adelaide. North Adelaide. That is also incorrect. So let's play at home. If you had West Adelaide, <gasps> that is correct. Broad Spectrum Oval. Do um, you know when that was? Uh, that was Big about 10 years ago. Right, oh, okay. Yep, there you go. Question four in venue for Bonds is Hickenbotham Oval is now known as what oval? Flinders University Oval. Correct. And question five, the last one on venues for Bonds is Hammer Homes was the naming rights for which ground? Can you spell that please? Hammer, H-A-M-R-A, oh, That's Holmes. padding at its best. <laughs> like the spelling might um, make a difference. Uh, I will go with Elizabeth Oval. Ah! Central Districts is correct. Yeah. So we get through the venues there and we have, we'll come back to the scoreboard actually, we'll get it up on the screen because I'm not actually sure what the score is, <laughs> but I think that you're in a pretty position going into your categories, Hazy. So what would you like to choose? We've had venues, premierships and player numbers done. We've got them there on the screen again. What would you like to pick? Um, I'm going to go with, I shouldn't because I don't reckon I really know, but I've kind of rehearsed a couple of questions that you might ask me. I'm going to go Jack Odie, medalist. Jack Odie, medalist. All right, we will go Jack Odie, medalist. Five questions for Hazy here. If he gets it wrong, Bonds gets a right reply. Starting question one, who won the first Jack Odie medal in 1981? Um, goodness me. I I'm going to say Bruce Abernathy, but that's incorrect, isn't it? That is incorrect, Bonds. You have a chance to tie the score here. Let's go with... 
Let's go with, oh, how much time is it? Craig Bradley. Incorrect, it was Russell Ebert. Oh, oh gosh. What an idiot. What a, oh, like, even if he didn't Sorry, know, you, Russell. wouldn't you just throw out Russell Lieber anyway? You would. I <laughs> actually thought that's what might happen, but it didn't. So question two is <laughs> on Jack Odie Millis. Only one player has won the Jack Odie twice. Who is it? That would be Chris Gowns. Correct. 7-5 lead for Hazy. No, question three. Question. Who was the last <laughs> losing player to win the medal? That Jack Odie medal. Be Mitch Greek. Correct. Question four. Just, just quickly, they're the two questions that I've you rehearsed. Do? <laughs> I was like, I know this. We didn't rehearse this before any of <laughs> Yeah, I, I thought he's got to go down the path. There's only been one player, player to do it twice. Two to come in this category. Question four. Can you name one of the three players to win the Jack Odie medal in the premierships between 2012 and 2014? One of the players. One of the three. Between 2012 and 2014. There is a correlation between those three years. Um, 2012, 2014, so it's Norwood's three peak roundabouts. Could be on to something. Um, one of the three players, and any one of the Jack Odie Mellis between 2012 and 2014. Matt Panos. Well done, Hazy is starting to advance away. He has one to go in this one. Who was the last Central's player to win the medal in 2010? To win a Jack Odie. Yes, that's the category. <laughs> it's on padding. It's about Jack Odie's. I know it's that. Um, well, that would have to be Ian Cullen. Wow, he has absolutely nailed his category segment with a 10 to 5 lead coming into the Who Am I. It means you are technically still alive, Bonds, <laughs> but you are absolutely up against it. I, I'm just a bit concerned how many Central's questions you've got. Oh, oh, well, jeez. <laughs> Pretty there even. Was, Eventually a central's question has to was, come uh, into it. There was two in there, however, um, one of them was the only player who's won it twice, and so that wasn't necessarily a central's question. Had to be asked. We're going to move to Who Am I? It is a 10-5 lead for Hazy. So the way this is going to work, Bond, you're going to have to get this correct after the five-point question. Sure. I'm going to go through for five points, four points, three points, two points, one point, and it's going to get easier as it goes. All right, for five points, Born on 14th of May 1987, making me 35 years of age right now. I grew up playing at Scoresby Football Club in Victoria. If you think you know who this is, Bond's your chance to tie the quiz. Can you just throw a name out there? You can, but you don't get it. Once you get it wrong, you're done. Okay. We'll go to four points. For four points, I played 204 games in the Sandville, kicking 168 goals, playing predominantly in the midfield. Joel Cross. Hazy has won the quiz in emphatic fashion. It is Joel Cross. That is it. Very well done to get that with four points. Right. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Experienced Hang campaigner. He has done this before, <laughs> Hazy, and he proved too strong, particularly in the categories segment. Um, hopefully, a few playing along at home. Got a few of those right as well. Really enjoy this part of the bunker. And join us next time for the 3 2 1 MVP Player of the Month in the bunker. Couple of big games again this week. Let's have a look at this round. It's round eight of the Host Plus Sample. Starts on Friday night with Norwood taking on the Adelaide Crows. Never easy to play at Norwood, uh, no matter what sort of stage they're at. The Red Legs, it seems like they're just getting along. They're building. Um, they're really, really tough at the parade. The Crows are on fire. Oh, you've got to tip the Crows, don't you? I'm tipping the Crows. Yeah, I, I'm with the Crows as well. Uh, Port Adelaide taking on the Roosters. This will be a cracking game of footy at uh, Alberton. This will be a cracking game because we're going to sort of wait and see what happens with Port Adelaide. Charlie Dixon, maybe he's not there. Ratio Fantasia, maybe he's playing at state league level. Xavier Dursma, will he be there? So um, as with Port Adelaide and Crows, a lot of it stems from what happens selection-wise from AFL level. But still, the Roosters are on fire. Yeah, I might pick the upset there. I might go for Port Adelaide. Oh, well, there you go. Mm. That is an upset. Uh, out uh, at Elizabeth Oval, ex-convenience Oval, Central's taking on Glenelg. So the best thing about uh, when you host teams like the Bays is you know that they don't like going out to the Ponderosa and saying that they'll still be too strong, unfortunately, for the dogs. Yeah, I think they will. Dogs are getting better and I think they'll be competitive. Yep. But, uh, I think the Tigers just get over the line. South taking on the Bloods down at Flinders University Stadium at Norlunga. This is interesting, isn't it? Because the Bloods showed a bit. In yeah, that was, that was good. They had some nice moments. Um, blokes like Hamish Hartlett returning from a hamstring, he's going to build. Um, we love what guys like Josh Carmichael can do in the middle. 
No Bryce Gibbs with the Panthers. They're in a bit of a tough spot. So I dare say the Bloods would go into this hoping for a bit of an upset. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I would think they'd give themselves a chance. But uh, yeah, interesting game. And the last game of the round, uh, probably the game of the round, it's Sturt taking on the Eagles at Wigan Oval. Really, really tough to play at Unley. In saying that, the Eagles are a really good side. Uh, I just can't see the Eagles losing two games in a row. They're that polished, they're that disciplined, and they're that hungry. But you're right, it'll be a crack of a game. Yeah, and uh, match-up on Dan Menz will be interesting. Oh, jeez. I mean, can you send three or four blokes to him? He's that good, isn't he? He's flying. <laughs> <laughs> That's embarrassing. <laughs> All right, let's uh, go to the Eliminator with Dan Menzel. Yes, welcome to the Top Sport Eliminator. Sign up now below with that code on the screen to get more markets and top odds with Top Sport. Top that. We are back with the Eliminator segment. We also have our previous winner, our celebrity pick, Bonds, is here. He took it out last time. That was our trial. Now we are serious. So whoever wins this, um, we're going to be playing for a sponsor each. Whoever wins this wins a cotton merch pack and a $100 voucher for our sponsor. So I'm going to be playing for the British. Hazy's going to be playing for iPerform. And the celebrity pick, Bonds, is going to be playing for Blue Sky Mobility. So let's get into the Eliminator. All teams are available. It works as normal. You've got to pick a team. They've got to win for you to stay alive to be in the running for those prizes for your sponsor. So the games are on screen right now. I'm going to let the previous winner go first. So Bonds, have a look at the teams there. Who stands out for you as the pick and who are you going to go with? Well, this is uh, simply a vengeance pick because uh, Hazy beat me in the quiz. I'm going for the Tigers to beat the Dogs. I don't mind oh, that. It's, yeah, that's a pretty reasonable sure thing. Pretty, mm. All right, so Hayes, are you going to go along the same lines or are you going to go elsewhere? Um, look, I'll go somewhere else and I'll go with the first game. So I'm going to go for the Crows to beat the Red Legs. I bet you they let me down. Huge. I'm and gonna, it will depend on selection as well. It will, it will, but uh, this segment will be out by the time you find out yep. you're playing. Um, <laughs> we're going to go three different games though. It's going to make it interesting first up. I'm going to go South Adelaide at home to bounce back and beat West Adelaide. So South Adelaide for mine, Glenelg for our celebrity pick and bonds and Adelaide for Hazy on Friday night. So let's hope we're all still alive to be in the running for that prize. Thanks again to our sponsor, Top Sport, for jumping on board with the Eliminator segment. Well, that's just about it. Another wrap, another show, another talking sample, and uh, a big weekend of sample footy. Make sure you get out and follow your team. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, a lot of good football expected this weekend. We're into round eight. Uh, don't forget as well the Sample W Grand Final. Of course, yes. North taking on Sturt Sunday at Cooper Stadium. Get down there and support some local footy. We'll see you next time on Talking Sample. 